So this pinstripe plant that I have here is called Japuertia elliptica cultivar vitata. Um, so it's often sold as Calathea vitata, but it is in the Japuertia. Um, Calathea got, a lot of the Calatheas got moved over to Japuertia. Elliptica, elliptica probably, um, you know, is referring to the, the coloration on the leaves. And I've seen it as a cultivar vitata, so they've actually kept the species named and turned it into a cultivar name. I don't know, sometimes it's so hard to actually um, keep track of these. But this plant is actually native to um, South America, so you'll probably see it throughout Brazil, Colombia, some of those other types of countries. And it is definitely much more of an understory plant, and you're going to want to give this a little bit more lower to medium light. Um, I do have to say the ones that start to look the healthiest are the ones that you give a little bit more of that humidity to and you keep a bit more of a higher moisture. I have one of these that's actually growing and thriving very well in my biopod, which is this polydarium, which is a little bit more like this terrarium that uses some water or vivarium that uses a little bit more water. So if you want to search out that, then you could see my polydarium episode. You just have to search for it on Plant One On Me because I cannot remember it off the top of my head like some of this other plant stuff that I'm like spewing over all over the place. Um, so anyway, so uh, Japertia elliptica vitata um, grows extremely well there. These started to become much more common in the houseplant market, so I see it in, in plant shops. Um, you don't need anything too perlite -y. You'll see I have some perlite in here, but not a lot. It's a little bit more of a peaty mixture. Um, you want to retain a little bit of that moisture for this plant. Otherwise, you might actually see that it'll start to brown up a little bit. Don't put it in any kind of direct light or any type of full sun. It will damage these leaves. It's definitely something that wants to be a little bit more in the understory. Now, I do have it, like I said, in my polydarium, and there is a little bit of a grow light, and it is have a tendency to grow up there, but the humidity and the moisture is so high that I think it kind of makes up for some of it. And my maidenhair wire, my maidenhair wire vine has kind of prevented some of that light to come through because that has actually kind of got up into the LED light fixtures and I have to like basically cull that polydarium um, very well and be able to cut it back. Uh, but that's for another episode on Plant One Ami. This is 365 days of plants, so we're gonna keep about talking about this plant. Uh, very sensitive to hard water, any salts, very similar to all the other prayer plants and the um, Calathea slash Deporteas out there. So you wanna be very mindful. I, for one, try to give it as much distilled water as possible. Um, nothing for my sink water. If I run out of distilled water, then I may actually have to give my sink water. But even if I don't have my sink water, I will go with a little bit more filtered water before I go with sink water because you want to keep the leaves looking healthy and fresh. And you don't want to get any of those brown tips. If you get a leaf that gets too brown, then you can just kind of clip it off because baby, once it's brown, it's not coming back. So um, you're going to probably snip it off or you know, sometimes you'll see growers, if it gets brown around the edge, then you'll just kind of snip it so it looks like still it has a, a little bit more of the, the leaf shape. Fertilizers, because it's so sensitive to fertilizer, you still wanna give it fertilizer, but go with a little bit more of organic fertilizer, maybe like a 111 or 115 or 1010.5 if it's synthetic and then just water it down by half. So if it's saying half teaspoon per gallon, then you're gonna to wanna to give it maybe like a quarter teaspoon per gallon, but you wanna see what the directions say on the back of that fertilizer and then just kind of have it. So I'm just using that as an example. Now, this one can be a little bit more sensitive. If you give it a little bit more of an intense light, all of a sudden it stresses the plant out. It'll probably come calling for those spider mites. It'll probably get some mealy bugs, all those types of thrips, you know, all those types of things. So you wanna to try to be mindful about that. You know, most of us don't have a tremendous highlight area in our homes. But um, so for those of us who have like an eastern exposure or maybe a northern exposure, then this plant is going to be great. But if you have blustery windows in the winter, just be mindful of that because these plants do not want to get any cold feet um, or cold leaves, if I should say that, or cold roots, either one of those. But really, really beautiful plant, such a stunner, you know, with these stripes on it. And um, like I said, growing in a little bit more of a terrarium setting and also in high humidity next to my humidifier.